It seems there is no in between when it comes to Elon Musk. People either love him or hate him. Some see him as the future of our society, while others think he's just a rich, immature guy who knows a lot about space. I don't know anyone who actually thinks that, but <laughs> I know a handful of people aren't the biggest fan of Papa Elon, and that's okay. Just wanna remind everyone that we don't have to agree on everything or like everything the same. That being said, it seems a handful of people aren't the biggest fan of Elon or at some point even called him out or exposed him. Today in IO, we're counting down the top 10 celebrities that warned us about Elon Musk. Smash that like button, and if this video gets 500 likes, I'll give someone a Tesla when I could afford it, but I promise I will. At some point in my life when I do make enough money that I could just give away Teslas, I promise I will give one of the first 500 to hit the like button, a Tesla. You have my word. Starting oh, us off at number 10, we got Grimes. Elon's current girlfriend and the mother of one of his children, Grimes was quick to call out Musk on Twitter when he tweeted out, I quote, pronouns suck. In response to the tweet, Grimes would respond, I quote, I love you, but please turn off your phone or give me a doll. I cannot support hate. Please stop this. I know this isn't your heart. She would later delete the tweet and she said doll. I think she meant dial. I don't know. Now for those of you who are unaware, preferred pronouns have become a hot topic of discussion, especially as of late, as a way to be more inclusive to trans and non-binary people. So to no surprise, following Elon's tweet, many were quick to call him out, including Grimes, who felt he was targeting a specific group of people. Musk is no stranger to Twitter controversy, and a few months after this tweet, he'd post another, a meme which was implying preferred pronouns is a form of oppression, at least as per the hat in which the man at war was wearing, which will once again upset numerous people. An article by Clean Technica referring to the meme caught the attention of Musk, who replied, I absolutely support trans but all these pronouns are an aesthetic nightmare. Number nine, Mark Zuckerberg. Bet you guys weren't expecting to see Zuck on here, were ya? Well, you'll be surprised some of the other multi-billionaires on here who apparently don't like Elon either. That may have given it away. Maybe not. Either way, guys, let's talk about Zuck. So it seems when you're one of the richest men in the world, your ego is the size of the universe because this feud appears to be a big old game of it was your fault, not mine. Taking us back to 2016, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket would explode alongside a $200 million satellite that Zuckerberg invested in as part of his internet.org project in Africa. Following the explosion, SpaceX released a statement reading, I quote, SpaceX can confirm that in preparation for today's static fire, there was an anomaly on the pad resulting in the loss of the vehicle and its payload. Per standard procedure, the pad was clear and there were no injuries. Any idea what that anomaly was? Seems Zuck had an issue with them blaming his satellite, so he took to Facebook with, I quote, as I'm here in Africa, I'm deeply disappointed to hear that SpaceX's launch failure destroyed our satellite that would have provided connectivity to so many entrepreneurs and everyone else across the continent. Oh boy. At number eight, Bowen Yang. One of the handful of Saturday Night Live cast members who following the announcement that Elon would be on the show publicly spoke out against the idea. At first, Yang posted an upset frowning emoji to his Instagram story shortly after the announcement that Musk would be the show's guest. Then Elon would tweet out, let's find out just how live Saturday Night really is. And Yang would repost a tweet to his story asking his followers, I quote, what the f does that even mean? Safe to say that Yang wasn't so in love with the idea of Musk being on the show, but it seems, as we know, the show must go on and they both remain professional doing their thing. Not sure if anything happened to make Yang dislike Musk personally, but I'm sure you guys can see why he's not everyone's cup of tea. And to no surprise, Bowen here isn't the only SNL member on our list. On to number seven, Benil Dariush. Now you guys may not know who this man is, and that's because he's not the biggest celebrity in the world, but he's still pretty well known among the MMA community. And just a few weeks ago, after winning his fight against Tony Ferguson, Dariush was quick to call out someone on the microphone. Usually fighters tend to call out other fighters in hopes of getting a matchup they're pushing for, maybe a title shot or a top contender fight. Benil decided to take his moment and call out, well, you guessed it, Elon Musk. Now, it seems the call out wasn't all that serious, as I'm sure the 155 pounds number three ranked overall in the division could take down Musk. But the fighter was still unhappy that Musk was taking so long to deliver his Tesla, which he ordered for his pregnant wife months ago. Speaking with ESPN, Daryush explained, I quote, the week before the fight, right before I was about to leave, some guys asked, hey, when is your Tesla coming? And I said, man, I don't know. I said jokingly that I would call Elon out after my fight. They said it was a great idea and we laughed. It was just a joke. But as I got closer to the fight, I said, you know what, I'm actually gonna call him out. It's been frustrating. I've been waiting for months. Elon would respond on Twitter and actually give Dariush a rental Tesla until his car is ready, but it turns out his car is ready and there's just no delivery date for it. Come on, Elon, the man's trying to buy the safest car out there for his new family, bro. Get it together. At number six, Andrew Dismukes. Is that how you say his name? Dismukes? Dismukes, I feel like it's Dismukes. I'm like notoriously known for saying names wrong and people are gonna be like, you can just look it up. The, it's funnier when I get it wrong. Following the news that Elon would be hosting SNL, Dismukes took to Instagram writing, I quote, the only CEO I wanna do a sketch with is Sherry O'Terry. It seemed very obvious that he wasn't a fan of Elon being the host for the show, but as per reports, it seems no one was forced to do any sketches with Elon or any host that they don't wanna work with. Speaking with page six, a source explained, I quote, speaking historically, if a cast member has been that unhappy, they don't have to do it. SNL boss Lauren Michaels won't ever make them do anything they don't want to do. 
On to number five, George Clooney. You guys remember this hunk? Before the days of Zac Efron and Timothy Chalamet, there was George Clooney. And there still is George Clooney because even as he gets older, this man is just very suave. He's got that silver fox, the gray beard. Uh, ugh, what a handsome man. However, it seems when it comes to Elon, well, things aren't that fantastic. Way back in 2013, when Tesla was still up and coming, working out all the kinks and all, it seems George was one of the first to get a car. I quote him saying, I had a Tesla. I was one of the first cats with a Tesla. I think I was like number five on the list. But I'm telling you, I've been on the side of the road a while in that thing. And I said to them, look guys, why am I always stuck on the side of the fucking road? Make it work one way or another. It seems Elon wasn't willing to just let that comment slide. Taking a Twitter with, I quote, in other news, George Clooney reports that his iPhone 1 had a bug back in 07. Oh boy. A.D. Bryant. Another SNL cast member who, upon hearing the news that Elon would be hosting, immediately took to her socials to let everyone know how she felt. Now, this was more of a subtle shot at Musk and really anyone with a lot of money. Reposting a Bernie Sanders tweet to her Instagram story, reading, I quote, the 50 wealthiest people in America today own more wealth than the bottom half of our people. Bryant didn't outright say Elon's name, but when the headlines started swirling involving her and fellow castmates Bowen Yang and Andrew Dismukes, well, she didn't deny anything. At number three, Johnny Depp. Well, I think anyone willing to get into a relationship with Amber Heard is a red flag. Oop. <laughs> it's no secret that Depp and Musk aren't on the best terms given the whole Amber Heard situation, which at one point led to Musk jokingly challenging Depp to a cage fight. Reports claim that prior to Depp and Heard breaking up, she was seeing Musk, but he's denied that claim the whole time, saying he's only been with her after Depp and Heard split up. Still, Johnny's clearly not a fan, and as recently as 24 hours ago at the time of me writing this script, Johnny's legal team dragged Elon into the lawsuit against his ex-wife. As per deadline, I quote, in the Musk subpoena, Depp's lawyers at Brown Rudnick LLP have 24 requests that essentially cover all communications between you and Mrs. Heard regarding Mr. Depp. Included among the two dozen requests are specific requests about the Sun case, the ACLU, and any allegations of physical abuse or domestic violence committed by either Mr. Depp or Ms. Heard. Number two, Jeremy Clarkson. It seems Elon's company Tesla Motors had an issue with a 2008 episode of the BBC show Top Gear. The show, which was hosted by Clarkson at the time, apparently, at least as per Tesla's lawsuit, I quote, faked a scene in which one roadster ran out of electricity and another experienced brake failure. And then while on BBC Newsnight, Musk straight up said, I quote, Clarkson's show is much more about entertainment than it is about the truth. However, it seems Clarkson wasn't having it telling the Daily Beast back in 2017, I quote, he sued me and lost. He appealed and lost. You go online and you read that we made it up, that we faked it, we didn't. You see, if anybody is going to get sued, I mean, you can't say that sort of thing. I could say all sorts of things about Musk, but I won't. Musk doesn't like losing. Unfortunately, he did twice. He's just got sour grapes. Oh boy. Now at number one, Jeff Bezos. It seems when you're the richest man in the world, I made this joke before, and someone comes knocking on your door, well, it's gonna piss you off. As they say, there could only be one. And at the time of this recording, Jeff is back on top. But at one point, Elon was named the richest man when Tesla's stock was absolutely ripping. Now it's pulled back a little bit. And at the time of this recording, Elon is sitting number three in the world, ahead of Bill Gates and behind Bezos and Bernard Arnault and his family. On a more serious note, it seems like these two are racing to the moon, the way the US and the Soviets did. In 2013, when NASA offered their launch complex 39A for private use, both Musk and Bezos tried to get it. After Bezos filed a complaint to the US government's general accountability, office, he would win the bid over Musk. Then Musk scored a 20-year lease for the exclusive rights, so Bezos did what anyone looking for revenge would do. Six months later, Bezos hired Bajiz Bazyal to head one of Amazon's space projects. Now, why is this important? Well, Bazyal was the former SpaceX vice president of satellites who Musk fired. Maybe it was Bezos seeing it as a good business, maybe a slap in the face to Elon, maybe both. In April, Elon secured another contract with NASA, which as per reports, had Bezos livid, and he'll be challenging this contract with the US government again. Oh boy. <laughs> and there you guys have it for the top 10 celebs who warned us about Elon Musk. Let us know your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. For now, let's use some common replies from the video. Jake Paul caught in 4K for Photoshopped DM. Lily Gunn said, first clue it's fake. He said someone over the age of 12 liked his videos. You, you shredded this kid in the comments and it was the funniest thing in the world. So I just tried to include your best chirps and that one was a top tier chirp. That was a very good one. Mafia Princess said, Jake Paul is going to get it handed to him and I'm so ready for it. Depends who he fights, but he's signed apparently a multi-fight deal with Showtime and Showtime Boxing is like one of the top dogs in the boxing world, so he's gonna be fighting real boxers now. Miss Rachel Elizabeth said, found out about the drama on Twitter and I'm still laughing about it. Tommy would knock Jake out. I think so too. Tommy, Tom, like I haven't even seen Tommy Fury fight, but like if you're related to Tyson Fury, if you're the brother of Tyson Fury, who's one of the best to do it, he's one of the best in the world right now. Like, you gotta have some skill. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Pepper. That's why I'm wearing red, I'm keeping it spicy, and we'll see you guys soon.